Hi, my name is Marcy, and I'd like to welcome you to the River of Life today. Uh, I hope you're greatly blessed by the service. I'd like to thank you for joining us. Father, we just thank you that you're the great I Am, the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords. I thank you, Father, that you have a plan for each and every one of our lives. And I thank you, God, that we are on that path. I thank you, Lord, for every person that come walking through the doors tonight. Nobody is here by mistake. God bless me. Thank you. And Lord, I thank you for what you're going to do. I pray that you open our hearts and our minds to receive all that the Spirit has to say. I pray, God, that you take the word out by the Spirit and that each one of us hear it in our own language. God, I pray signs, miracles, and wonders. Yes. I pray evidence of your presence. Yes. I pray, God, that you start to move mightily in this place, God, by your Spirit in yes. Jesus' name. And Lord, I just thank you, Lord, that the plan that you have is good. Yes. Right. So, Father, our hearts are open to you tonight. Yes. Father. Holy Spirit, come. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, come. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, come. Thank you. Holy Spirit, come. <coughs> Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be She's like, Marcy. <laughs> Shay, Shay. I, she's my son. You know, so I was like, I'm just tired, you know, but it's, it's pretty awesome what's going on over there. Um, and I know they'll have it again next year. So, you know, if that's something that you might be interested in, I will be filling people in about it more later. Um, so it actually finishes on Saturday at 4 o'clock, and then they're having a healing service at the United Methodist Church here in town at 7 o'clock. And Bobby will be preaching about healing, and then they will be praying for healing at this um, healing service. And the people that went through, um, it will be part of that service. So if anybody wants to come uh, to the United Methodist Church, which is everybody knows where the Dairy Queen is, which is now closed um, for the winter. Yeah. But yeah, yes, we no ice cream. <laughs> but um, anyways, if you feel led to go to that uh, healing service, it's at seven o'clock. So uh, you are invited. We will be there, and we'll just see what God does. So, um, so I want to just talk to you a little bit about just kind of being out of place. And the reason that I'm saying that is because sometimes I feel really out of place. Um, and so it's just because I am who I am, but I'm always in the right place. But we, we start to believe lies and we start to listen to the enemy because he's the father of lies. And we all of a sudden start to believe that we're out of place, that we stand out, not in a good way, but in a bad way. Um, and so I just want to tell you that the, when I was talking about, um, talking on Sunday, uh, one of the things that we, we did some of the lyrics to the song that we're singing, um, Only Jesus, and it talks about the chaos, but it also talks about, you know, the compass, and the compass should always be the Word of God. The compass should be the Word of God always because the Word of God will always be here, always. Even our spiritual gifts, 
they'll pass away. There won't be a need for them anymore here on earth, but the word will always be here. And so it's important that you evaluate your life and evaluate the truth of the word of God, what it says about you and what it says about me. And it doesn't matter how you feel because the devil is a liar. He tries to convince people that they can't hear him. He is a liar. He is a liar. But as long as you believe the lie, it's hard for you to believe the truth, and you need to believe the truth to be set free from the lie. Yeah. Amen? Because right. truth is what makes us free. And so he tries to convince us, um, and he's a liar. And so I just want to let you know that because he does this to everybody. Nobody is excluded. If you are a Christian, you are not excluded from here and from the enemy trying to tell you that you don't measure up, that you're just really, you don't have what it takes, that you don't operate in the gifts of the Spirit, and that you're this and you're that. But the awesome thing about the Holy Spirit is that the Holy Spirit is the one that gives you the boldness to stand up and the power to stand up because he is already defeated. But it takes you to operate in who he is in you. You understand that? And so when God is given us the same spirit that rose Jesus from the grave, and we refuse to walk in it, you're going to be defeated. Because you're not walking in the power of God. And you cannot overcome the world without the overcomer of the world operating through you. It's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So it can't be by you in any way, shape, or form. But in Christ, all things are possible. And so one of the biggest things is that if the enemy, you know, can't defeat you physically, he's going to try to defeat you mentally. And he's going to come against your mind. The mind, I don't, you know, I can remember years ago, I read The Battlefield of the Mind by Joyce Myers. And that is such an excellent book. That, that is when I realized, and I was brand new into following Jesus, that's when I realized that I had been lied to all my life by the devil, and I had been believing the lie, and I did not know how to overcome these things. So Joyce Myers is a very uh, awesome teacher. She's wrote many, many books, but I will not forget it. And then I got... I got her teachings on it, and I watched, not watched them, then you listen to them. I listened to them over and over and over again on Battlefield of the Mind because I knew that my mind was always in a battle, always in a battle, always in a battle. And, you know, the mind is a powerful thing. That's why God says, that's why the, the scriptures say we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ when we're operating in the spirit of Christ. But you can get a hold of you and overpower anything because you've got to be willing, right? You've got to be willing. And so it's important that you be willing to allow the spirit of God to work through you because as he does, you start to realize that he's alive in you. It's not wrong to have the battles at all because you can't stop the battles, but you can win them. You can win them. And I promise you, it was kind of cool. I heard something this week by somebody. They said they, they just experienced some deliverance, and they were like, that's it? it it's that simple? Yeah, it's that simple. It's that simple. But see, the world has made the devil a big devil and God a little God. Where in reality, it's, we have a big God and it's a little devil. But if you give him all the praise and all the glory, what you praise will grow. What, will, what you praise will become your reality. And so it's important to praise the Lord and to get in relationship with the Lord. Amen? Amen. And so I don't know where I'm going yet. So I'm not going anywhere until the Holy Spirit shows me where we're going. But I do know, uh, I do know this. Um, well, actually, I might know where we're going. No, I don't. <laughs> I'm just being real. Um, I want to. I want to talk about. I actually want to. I want to do a couple things, but I, I want to talk about the power of God today. And I talk about it a lot. Because if we forget who Jesus is in us, then we're just going to lay out. And we won't be effective in our lives and we won't be effective in the world. Amen. And last week I asked where the scripture was. I don't have my Bible. 
I don't even have it here. My other Bible. My, like this, this is just the, my iPad Bible, but it's not the same. But um, in, it's in John. And I'm going to see if I can find it really quick where I want to go. But we're going to the book of John. Oh, Lord, help me find it, Holy Spirit. If I ha I'm a visual person, so with my Bible, it's right there. <clears throat> I think it's... No. Let's see if I can just find it really quick. I apologize, but I, I don't want to, I want to read it versus just quote it. So uh, let's go to um, 3, John 3. And we're just going to, we're going to start right in verse 1. It says, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. In other words, he's talking to Jesus. And Jesus answered him and said, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say unto you, unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born in the flesh is flesh, and that which is born in the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said, to you, you must be born again. So I just want to stop there for just a second, and I just want to back up to verse 2. It says, this man came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. First of all, I want to talk about Nicodemus. Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. And, and we know why he did it, because he was a Pharisee, he was an educated person, but he was being convinced, he was understanding that Jesus was real. Everything that he was taught, and every, all the people that he hung out with, believed one way, but he was starting to sway the other way. So he couldn't freely do this in the daylight where everybody could see. He couldn't just be exposed in front of all of his friends because, for one, he had not been born again. Jesus was still here. But the thing is, is that this is a picture of the world. There are people that are in the world that are wanting to sway to the things of God, but they don't know how to get away from their friends and their acquaintances, and all the people that they've surrounded themselves with to come over and talk to Marcy about what they see in Marcy. And the reason I'm saying this is because this is going to happen to you, and this is going to happen to me, because the day is coming where people will come out, and they will come to see you, and they will ask you, because they see Christ in you. But what's important is there's people, even in this room, that know Christ, but they're in a secret relationship with Christ. And you don't have to hide that relationship that you have with Christ. I understand that you'll be persecuted at times, and you might even be hurt at times, but he is the comforter, and he's the one that will take care of us through all of it. Because he says that he will, right? And see, this is what the Holy Spirit does. He comforts us. He empowers us. 
He helps us walk in a confidence that you never walked in before. He helps you say things and do things and pray for people and believe that people can be healed because all of a sudden you're in the boldness. The boldness like Peter had. Do you remember in the, and I'm not, I'm not going to go there, but I'm going to talk about it because I've been reading Acts and Acts is just, I like Acts. I, I think Acts is an amazing book and I like Acts, and, but I want you to understand that Acts is what the first church looked like. And I believe that's what this church is going to look like. I believe that God is growing it to be what he wants it to be. I believe he's going to bring in the people that he wants to use to help do it. And he's going to bring an influx of people in continuously all the time, different people, to receive truth. And so you've got to have a great team, a team that will be willing to be here and press in for those that God is going to send. But you need to understand that there is a time to wait on the Lord. We've got to wait on the Lord to come. Now, I know he's always here. Don't get me wrong. But remember, I've been in the book of Acts. And the disciples were commissioned by Jesus. And then they were told he breathed on them. Jesus breathed on the disciples prior to ascending to go to heaven. And he commissioned them. And he breathed on them. But then he sent them away to a room to wait on him. And then the Holy Spirit showed up. Why? Because Jesus was now at the right hand of the Father. And what he was supposed to do was completed. And so now the Holy Spirit came. And they became filled with the Holy Spirit. And that is exactly what Nicodemus was looking for. Because it was different than anything he had ever seen or experienced. And he was drawn to it. And this is Jesus. And so Jesus is the Holy Spirit as much as he is God the Father. But the important thing is, is there's people that are going to be drawn to you because of the Holy Spirit that is in you. Because you have the ability to bring comfort to the lost and to the hurting and to the broken. But you, I have the ability to give God the glory and to lead people into the kingdom of heaven. But you also walk in much more than that, the power. The power of the Holy Spirit. The Word of God says the same power that rose Jesus from the grave lives in us. That is one of my most favorite scriptures in the world. In the Word. In the world. In the Word. Because I know it's truth. And I know that it's in me. And someday it's going to come out of me. And all your hair is going to be blown back. But then it's going to come out of you. Because you will grow with your leader. So you want your leader to grow. You want your church to grow. Not so much in numbers, because God will take care of that, but in maturity and in love, because God is love. And if you operate out of love, everything is possible. Everything. But see, we don't always know that in our hearts they're kind of wicked, you know, that, that we're kind of, that we got issues, we got junk. That's what healing school is all about. People are over there getting some inner healing of old wounds so that they can receive more from the Lord and walk in the abundance of what he is in them. But these old wounds and the effects of these old wounds and wounds have kept them back to where they come up for prayer over and over and over again, but they've never been able to become free. Right. So what's happening to those people is they're getting free from the wound. And when the wound is closed, <laughs> there's nothing attached to it. All of the stuff that follows the wound so that they can now be free to receive more from God. He's doing that here, and that's why we minister up here. But this is a little deeper. But I want you to know that where you're at right now, whatever that may look like, that there's Nicodemuses in your life that are waiting to come to you. And you have the ability to lead them to the kingdom of heaven. One of the things Pastor Bobby said to me the very first night, she had asked us to, I'm not the only pastor there, there's Pastor Jeff and Pastor John that, that are helping with, with the school. And um, so she, says, I, she asked us all if we would... Um, go over here to pray for people as they were leaving. And she says, and Pastor Joyce, don't prophesy. <laughs> because it's, 
natural for me, you know, and just to bless them. And so she wasn't shutting me down in any way. I just knew that meant, like I tell people, when you pray sometimes, you need to be aware so that you're not spending 15 minutes with one person. Uh, there's other people here that can you can pray with them and then set them down with Anna and let Anna minister to them while you go to the next person and be prayed for. So I knew exactly what she was talking about, you know, so and so it's really hard for me because God shows me things all the time. I did not prophesy, but when I bless them, I bless them with the encouragement that God had put in my heart for them. So it was a blessing. It was just a power blessing. <laughs> it's a super blessing. And, of course, Pastor Bobby would never shut me down because she encourages me. She knows. She actually has me teaching tomorrow on the Holy Spirit. And um, y'all can be praying for me um, because what I'm going to be teaching is out. You know, I got all this. I got a whole bunch of lots of pages <laughs> to, to read and follow. But because the Spirit of God is in me, I know that he will show up. He shows up at weddings. I do a wedding, and I go off. I go off the, what I'm supposed to do, because he, God, wants to speak personal to the couple that's getting married. And all of a sudden, I'm getting, I'm there, and all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, and this, and and God, and oh, yeah, that's for you, <laughs> because it's for them. Because that's what he does. Because he's personal, and he's up close in our lives. And you have the same thing that I have. But our gifts all look different and we all operate different, but it's for the same purpose. It's for the kingdom of heaven because God wants us to bring people into the kingdom of heaven. But it's more than that. It's to walk in relationship with Jesus. Do you understand that? Do what he did, say what he said, and be who he is without being him. Do you understand? Don't, don't get that wrong. It's him working through you. But you got to get out of the way. I got to get out of the way. And sometimes I don't want to get out of the way. Sometimes I don't want to do it. Sometimes I want to go do this instead. And God says, but you've been called to this. And this is what I want you to do. I'll take care of this stuff later. But this is what you were created for. This is where you need to be. It's never a burden to me. Just sometimes I want to get a little selfish. But the thing is, is once I get over myself, I can't wait to get here. I can't wait to, to, to go south. You know, I can't wait to, to do the school that we're just going to be finishing up on Saturday because it's exciting and it's God. God's exciting. I don't know if he's exciting in your life tonight, but if he's not, this is a good day to get excited for God. Amen. It's a good day. And you've got to understand that you've got to come out of the crowd even if it has to be, you don't have to tell everybody yet. God will give you the boldness by the Holy Spirit for you to rise up and be who you are in Christ. He'll do it. And, and if you get hurt, he'll take care of you. I remember a couple years ago, I was down in, um, it was just a couple years ago, and Marcy and I were down for Jesus' image, and then, of course, we went to Yuli, and... Um, and this time, I didn't preach. And Pastor Rick said, do you want to preach? I said, no, I don't want to preach. I said, I'm just coming. I'm just coming to receive. And so um, I got up there, and I, I was so oppressed. This was just two years ago. I was so oppressed they could feel me walk in the room. And I know what that feels like because I know what oppression looks like, and I see it on people, and I can feel it when it enters the room. I don't always address it, and some, you know, because some people just sit in it. But, you know, they're not ready yet to, to, to come into freedom. But I, I walked in that place, and I knew the power of the Lord was there. I knew the power of the Lord was here, but God decided to take care of me down there. And I remember sitting at the table afterwards, and I started to cry. And um, I was explaining to them all the stuff that was going on up here. And, um, and I said, you know, I just, I just don't want to be hurt. And Jeff said, hey, that's part of ministry. <laughs> and immediately when he said that, oppression left me because I received it. That's part of ministry. So if you want to serve God and you, and you want to really be a minister of the gospel, it will be painful at times. 
But the wonderful thing is, is God Almighty comforts you and takes care of you. But what happens is we get into, poor me, oh my gosh, I'm getting hurt and people don't understand. No, they don't understand because they've probably got issues and they're wounded and so they hurt you. But when I realized about Jesus and what they did to him, I was like, wow. I came back empowered by the Holy Spirit because I received truth. I might not have liked it, but it's truth. And because I received it, it made me free. And I came back empowered, completely different, and healed and made whole with one, one word. Well, Pastor Joyce, one thing about ministry is you are going to be hurt. See, when you're a shepherd or you're a leader or you're in ministry at any level and you're leading, you're dealing with people. And they're going to hurt you probably. Doesn't mean that they meant to, but it can happen. But God's the healer. So you have to forgive right away and you have to release. Well, what happened to me is it kept coming at me and kept coming at me and kept coming at me and I was in the battle, in the battle, fighting the battle, fighting the battle, fighting the battle. I didn't even realize how wore out I was by the time I left Manistee, Michigan because this is my battlefield. But I knew what to do. I went away. I went to where I'm called to go when I'm hurting or I need help. I went to my spiritual covering. I went to my leaders. I went to the people who were, are called to help me. And they tell me the truth just like I tell you the truth. Some of you have sat with me and haven't liked the truth. But some of you have sat with me and have received the truth. Because we're all looking for the same thing. Right? Love. Acceptance. Freedom, to be used of God, to grow, to help other people, to help our families, to get our children, you know, to grow up in the things of the Lord. We're all in the same race together. Amen. Nicodemus wasn't in that race, but he started seeing who was winning it. So he came out in the night to visit Jesus and to talk to Jesus. And he said, nobody, no teacher, nobody can do these signs unless they're with him. Nobody can love like I can love Anna because I have Christ in me. But there's other people in Anna's life that are full of Christ too that can love her right. Nobody can give that kind of love unless they're attached to the love that comes from God because God's love is the only love that will never leave you, never forsake you, the love that will change you from the inside out, the one that will show you who you really are and will not give up on you. Amen. Although we give up on him, he does not give up on us. Amen. So it's important that we continue to be who God is calling us to be. Because I just got to tell you, there's Nicodemuses in your area that are watching you that want to come out. They're so influenced over here by everything that they've been taught and everything that they know. But they're saying, but there's more over here and I see stuff. I want that stuff. I want what they have over there. And it's okay if you have a bad day and you have to spend the whole time at the cross because God, you know, is there meeting you there. It's okay that, that you have issues and problems that because he's the problem solver. Yes, he he's the deliverer. Amen. He's our peace. Yes. He's Jehovah Shalom. He's, he is Jehovah Sabaoth. I love this. He's the Lord of hosts, which means when I'm in a battle, he releases a host of angels to come on my behalf and fight for me in the heavenlies because I'm battling in here on earth and I don't even understand what's happening up here. But God does, and he says, listen, you see my daughter down there? Go now. Amen. Battle those things that are coming against her. Amen. That's right. Because he's the Lord of hosts, Amen. not the enemy. Right. He's the Lord of hosts. Guess what? He's on my side. <laughs> he's on your side right he's amazing I love him so much and so listen I want to say that um, Jesus he answered him he said most well, so surely I say to you unless one is born again he cannot see the kingdom of God alright so he's telling Nic Nicodemus you got to tell people truth we can't if you start swinging around the mulberry bush Take a second. 
and ask for the boldness of the Holy Spirit to come up because he wants to love on that person that's coming to you. But we sometimes get fearful and we do kind of crazy weird things in that when we get like that. So it's important that you invite the Holy Spirit in. He's already there with you, but hand him over your session. Hand him over your lunch that you're going to have. Hand him over the pre prison ministry or jail ministry that you're walking into. Hand over the meetings that you walk into, Frankie. You hang, you hand all that over to the Holy Spirit and ask him to be all that he is in you because there are people out there that are watching you that want to come out, that want to come out. Right? Yes. Because he's amazing. And you're amazing because he's amazing. And you shine because he shines. And people see the difference in you, the way that you walk, the way that you talk, the way that you worship, the way that you start to come in and fellowship because all of a sudden you're finding a family, maybe a family you've never had or a family that you don't have anymore because most of them are in heaven because that happens. But you will find love in the church. You know, it breaks my heart when I go to stuff and I hear other people, ministers, talk about the church um, because I do know that the church, I do understand about the church, but I also understand that God says in the end in, that he's going to pour his spirit out on all mankind, that God is going to, and he's going to pour it out, and he's starting to pour it out, and it's starting to become evidence in the churches, not just our church, but other churches. And I realize that there's other churches, and I realize there's churches out there that aren't, you know, but I also know that I want to focus on the ones that are, and I want to focus on what, what God is saying, because if I'm spending my time talking about other churches and how bad they are, then I'm wasting precious time about how great God is in the kingdom of heaven and just hey find a good church I don't direct them I say find one God will show you big thing make sure they believe in the Trinity God the Father God the Son Jesus and God the Holy Spirit because there is only one God and that is the only God the only powerful God and one day every knee shall bow because that's what the Word of God says so you can't compromise you can't go to half believing churches that keep the Holy Spirit out because they think he's spooky oh my gosh that is such a deception because you need him you need to be empowered and he's the power of the Trinity you understand that the authority is the father right. and the son is the most obedient who lives in all of us so we can be obedient amen yes. so that's the most important thing to find first of all what they believe and make sure and make sure that they preach the word of God be sure, be sure, and find love in that church. Because you can walk into a church that believes all this stuff, but they will not give you love. Because they don't know. Don't get mad at them. They just don't know. Many people just don't know. Because they weren't taught. This, these are revelations. You know what the Word of God says? I will show you the mysteries of the gospel. That's what happens when you become intimate. With the Spirit of God, He starts showing you the mysteries of who He is. He starts working who He is in and through you. He starts to give you revelation of the Word of God. You come into relationship, see, but you can't do anything without being born again. You've got to be born again. You've got to be born again. What gets born again is definitely not this flesh, it is your spirit, man. Amen. Your spirit. Because that's what we are. You become born again. And then the word of God says that he will start to cause you to change. Some people get it like, whoop, now. But normally, it's a process. As far as change comes. But the desires start to change. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, Bobby's telling some of her stories this week. Well, she's a rebel, boy. She was a rebel. She was talking about, she went into this, so funny, she went into her pastor's office. She was an on fire, brand new Christian. She puts the Bible down, she says, and she says, you must not believe in God. You must not believe in the Bible, I don't think. Well, what do you mean? Do you know that the Bible says that we're supposed to be doing everything that Jesus is doing? How come we're not? <laughs> and how come you ain't talking about it? <laughs> now, you want to talk about, but see... Can I tell you, I, I, I can't imagine somebody coming in and doing that. But 
I can see her doing it. But the thing is, is I can imagine it challenged him to the greatest degree. But it also, she had to learn how to not be so. But she didn't know any better, so her pastor had to learn great, great, great grace. <laughs> great grace. I know I've learned great, 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 great grace as well. Why are you looking at me? Because I can look at you and get away with it. But grace is full of love. Right. The power of grace is love. Amen. It's just love. But until we love ourselves, we can't give it. Amen. And the only way to get it is through the Father. Sorry, from the Father through the Son. So you have to be born again. Because the only way to really get love that every one of us was created for is to become the beloved of the Creator God in heaven. And it's very important that you remember this about you if, you, if you're saved. If, you, if you're born again, it's always good to revisit that. He chose you. He chose you. And he's going to send people to you because you have something that the world needs. And only you can give it to certain people. Only you, your personality, the way you look, what you wear, hats and tie-dye shirts and, you know, I mean, I, I, and I can, I can do this with her too because she's not going to get offended with me. But, oh, and one of my girlfriends that um, I just seen last week, she was asking me how she can dress to come to church. I said, any way you want, clothes, please. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, but how's everybody dressed? I said, every, all over the board. All over the board here at River of Life. And uh, I says, my husband, he likes to wear dress pants, a dress shirt, and a tie on Sundays. That's just Dan. That's the way he is. I said, no, I don't do that. I said, I wear anything, anything from, you know, uh, nice shirts and jeans. I never know what I'm going to wear, but I don't. I don't, I have the pastor stuff, you know, like I thought pastors wore in my closet that I don't have to wear, and I'm so glad it's, I just have to wear it once in a great, great while. And um, you know what she said to me, and it's really amazing. She said, just think, if you dressed a certain way, the people you would attract. And I got to thinking about that. Because people want to be comfortable, and I can remember the day where we were all afraid to go to church because we thought we had to be, sure. we had to look on the outside what we weren't on the inside. Mm -hmm. and, and some of us just rebelled because people have. And I love to dress up for the Lord, don't get me wrong, because I will in a heartbeat because I like it, especially if he tells me, you know, I want you to dress, I want you to dress up today. I will. But it's never about this. It's about this. And you so want somebody to be able to approach you. And it really isn't about what we wear. It's about who we carry. It's the presence of the Lord. Amen. 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 Let's pray. God, I thank you that you are the bread of life. And I thank you, God, that you have given me Nicodemuses. And I thank you that I was one, and I was brave enough to come out of the crowd. And I thank you that you put the right people in my life that could speak into my life, that could love me and my mess. And Lord, I pray an anointing on each person in this room today. And I ask God that you take them deeper. And I ask God that your face would shine upon them. I pray, Father, that they would walk in the joy of the Lord. I pray, God, that everything they put their hands to, Father God, would succeed. Father, I pray, God, that you would multiply them in abundance, in love. I pray, Father God, that the world can see that in and through us. I pray, God, that we know where to point. 
and that we won't take your glory. God, I pray that we walk in who you've called us to walk as, as individuals in relationship with you and as a body of Christ. In Jesus' name. All God's people said, Amen. Amen. Okay, so I do want to, um, gosh, I want to, I, I have my Bible. I usually have my Bible here. Um, I do want to do a couple things. When Jesus was ministering about the kingdom of heaven, what did he do? What's some of the stuff that he did? He walked among the people, yep, and he healed them, prayed for them, touched them, you know, poured, just poured out on them. And, and they followed him. And then he told them about the kingdom of heaven. So I just want to speak to those that God's going to highlight in the room because he loves you. He loves every one of us, and I can't speak to everybody. I've done that before. I was exhausted by the time I got home. I was sprawled out. But um, first of all, I want to talk to my husband. And I want you to know that, um, that God says that you've taken a step in faith. Um, that sometimes you're a little hard on yourself, and you don't always see all the things of God in you because you're a very busy man. But God does. And he says that your gifts go further than what you understand. And that the love that you carry for him goes further than what you understand. And God says that he doesn't always let us see it because then, you know, our motives, you know, can become about us versus about him. But God says that he's, he's entrusted you with a portion of ministry that you haven't stepped into yet. But that when it's time... It will happen. I don't even know what that is. But I know that he's entrusted you with a portion of ministry that you don't have yet, but it's coming. So it's like it's in the heavenlies, but it's going to come to earth. He says you're worthy. You're worthy. It's not that you're worthy for the ministry, but you're worthy. You're just plain worthy. Nicodemus says, can approach him. Amen? Amen. And Marcy, uh, for you, um, y you know, God, he's changed your name. And he's been changing your personality a little bit. And it's been a little difficult. But yet you so know it's God and you love him so much and you're excited about the change. But it's weird for you. It's just a little bit weird. But the Lord says, just continue to keep looking up and allowing him to do what he's doing because he wants to manifest the gifts in you to a greater degree. And so that old Marcy had to go away. The, the door had to be shut because the new one opened. Yeah? Yeah. 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 So that's good. Yeah. And Miss Mary, um, sometimes you wonder if you're seen. Okay. You know that the Spirit of God sees you. It must be because I'm in front of something. But um, God wants you to know that you're seen in more ways than you, you realize. He sees the things that you're doing behind the scenes that other people don't get to see. And he asks you to do things in secret, and you do them. Yeah. It's like your right hand knows what the left hand's doing, but you don't let this one tell. You fight that temptation, and God says there's blessings around the corner for you. Yeah. Amen? Amen. It's probably jewelry because I got quite a bit on tonight. And Brad, uh, for you, um, the Lord says to keep going strong in him in the power of him. And he says that you don't get it right all the time, but... The thing is, is your heart's right. He says that you're still dealing with a few, a few things from back here. It's almost, there's almost like, it's almost like there's 
maybe one or two things that the Lord is asking you to give up or to let go of because you're holding on kind of tight to them and because you're holding on tight, he can't give you the new. So I don't know what that is. And I just pray. I pray, Father God, that you just reveal to him what that is in Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And Reva, oh, I seen you jump. <laughs> and this is, and people say this all the time, well done, fine and faithful servant, because that is from the word of God. But when somebody says that, that is because they're hearing it from heaven. Because the Lord loves to use his word when he brings forth things, when he's talking to his people, to his children. And that's what I'm hearing with you. And the Lord says that it's not always easy what you're walking in. And sometimes you have to be put on the back burner, you know, when you should be on the front burner. But the Lord sees you and he knows the place that you take and sacrifice for others. And that he's going to take care of you. He is. The holy God. Yeah. Amen. Good. And bear. So with you, you are a man that's on a journey. And that's what I'm hearing. A man on a journey. And the Lord has turned the page with you. And you probably know, I don't know, I think I'm just a, a, a confirmation for you that God has turned the page on you some, with something in your life. And you are now a man on a journey. You're not quite exactly sure where that's going to take you, but you're willing to go. And I see you being obedient to the Lord. Even though sometimes it causes you a little pain. So... Yeah, good, 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 good. Thank you, Lord. And how are you? Good, how are good you? Good to see you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I just want to, first of all, I just, can I just give you your hand? Because I just want to pray, Father, thank you for your daughter. Thank you, God. <sighs> okay. God says, this is what I'm hearing, that you've done like a full circle, you know, and you started here and it's like you've now you're, you've come back. You've done this full circle and you're back to this place with the Lord that you didn't mean to, but somehow something got in the way. And so you've done like this full circle and you've had a desire all this time to get to this place with God. But your desire has grown while you've been in this place. It's a desert, you know, but yet in the desert, you've won many battles. You've overcome many things. And I think that one thing God has shown me is you've learned him more and you've seen him more in your life and you see him you know, in a way that you didn't know him before because you know he was with you. And so now you're in this place, full circle, new place, but full circle. And it's going to look different, but he says you're on track. Amen. Good. Okay. Yeah. All right. So just father, I just thank you and praise you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to not shut down the service um, I, yet because I just feel like that God just wants to just move. Thank you, Lord. So, Father, I just thank you for each person that's here. And I pray, God, that you would just touch them and bless them and be with them. We love you so much, Lord. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, Amen. Amen.